name is Jake Gagum, Brandon um, Reynolds, Ron Comfort, and our presentation is Are Birds Really Dinosaurs? So this is a timeline um, when dinosaurs started to evolve in the Triassic period and the birds started <laughs> showing up and evolving near the Jurassic period about 208 million years ago. Um, and dinosaur, the mass extinction was in the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. And then people started showing up in the Minnesota era. The history of birds is they belong to the Manoraptora in a group of the theropods, which are two-legged and carnivorous dinosaurs. Um, they're the only dinosaurs to live past the Cretaceous. Uh, mass extinction, but they were never on top of the food chain. Uh, modern paleontology shows that the birds, as you saw in the graph, started appearing in the Jurassic Age um, in the first quarter of it, and the mass extinction, which wiped out all dinosaurs other than the birds, uh, or other than one group, and that is the group that all birds today come from. classification systems. Um, so it depends on which system is used if uh, birds will be classified in the reptile family or not. Um, the Linnaean system does not classify them that as reptiles because in that system reptiles are said to be cold-blooded and, sca and scaled, whereas the phylo phylogenetic system, which is what modern biology uses does classify them as reptiles because it's based upon ancestry. Um, the closest relation that a bird has to another animal is actually the crocodile, which makes sense because a crocodile is a relative of the dinosaurs. Um, so modern birds uh, evolved from two-legged dinosaurs, called theropods, as you stated. Uh, theropods included dinosaurs, uh, like the T-Rex and the Velociraptors. Um, so for decades, the only direct fossil link between birds and dinosaurs was the Archaea, uh, Archaeopteryx. It's pictured there. Um, so this was the only concrete fossil evidence that birds were directly uh, related to dinosaurs. Um, so the transition from T-Rex to bird took about 10 million years, um, which is a relatively short time period. Um, so over this time period, the same bird features began to evolve, um, resulting in a smooth transition. So things for like feathers and beaks began to form. Um, and here, the transition from large to small, uh, we have some salivariosaurs, uh, which are all related to birds. Um, and they shrank fast and took place long before birds themselves evolved. Um, so studies have found that some of these dinosaurs started shrinking 200 mil million years ago, which would have been 50 million years ago, 50 million years before the uh, Archaeopteryx came to be. And then here we just have a little graph um, showing the, the slope at which um, they started shrinking, so relatively fast. All right, species relations. This is the uh, Eutyranus holly. It's for a beautiful feather tyrant. Uh, it was discovered in China in 2012. It's a relative of the T-Rex. And the only thing that's different is it has a coat of proto feathers. Um, this predator wasn't able to fly by the inclusion of later theropods, which look like dinosaurs but have wings and fe tail feathers, clearly suggests that the later evolved to become the former. Uh, the birth of the beak. Modern day birds, they have two bones known as premaxillary bones that fuse together to form the beak. Whereas <coughs> dinosaurs, they had two bones that were made separated to form the snout. And, uh, to figure out how the change might have happened, researchers mapped out the activity of two genes that are expressed in these bones. They found that the reptiles and mammals have two patches of activities, or of activity, one on either side of the developing nasal, nasal cavity. Birds, on the other hand, had a much larger single patch spanning the front of the face. The, research, the researchers reasoned that the alligator pattern could serve as a proxy for that of dinosaurs, given that they are similar. They have similar snouts and premaxillary bones. Go ahead. Um, this is the research, chicken embryos research. 
Uh, the researchers then undid a bird-specific pattern of gene expression in the chicken embryos using chemicals to block the genes in the middle of the face. Uh, the result, the treated embryos had a more dinosaur-like face. As you can see, the uh, mess of the regular chicken is normal, and the experimental looks more like the alligator with the snout. Um, the findings highlight how simple molecular tweaks can trigger major structural changes. Um, recent work has shown behavioral similarities between birds and dinosaurs. There is fossil evidence that many theropods, theropods laid eggs in the nest and even sat on top of them. Birds and theropods also both walked on two legs and many of each have or had three talons on each arm or wing. Then there are feathers, which are thought to evolve from scales and likely useful for providing shade and cooling, besides also providing insulation and likely use as ornamentation during displays like modern day peacocks. In conclusion, these discoveries probably mean that birds evolved in a parallel path alongside dinosaurs starting the process before most dinosaur species even existed. Questions? Do they talk about how you decide? Do they draw a line that says once I don't know what saying, that once you reach a certain point in evolution that it's a bird and no longer a dinosaur, or are they just saying all birds belong with dinosaurs? Um, I'll probably say like once they start actually flying, uh, is where you probably draw the line. But as they shrunk, like it had to do with size, and like if you obviously if you have a bigger dinosaur, it's not going to be able to fly because it's bigger than yeah. And then the early bird-like dinosaurs, they had the proto feathers, which weren't actually really feathers, and they didn't really show characteristics of being able to fly. So they were just you know smaller bird-like creatures. What's the challenge in trying to figure out whether an animal, would say, has feathers or not? Um, probably finding evidence of them. Um, for the uh, Archaeopteryx, um, they, ha they had like actual feathers. Um, I'm not really sure how they... It's believed that it came from scales, like scales yeah. formed mm -hmm. in the feathers. It, I'm not really sure how. Yeah, it, it's tough because what you get preserved for dinosaurs are the bones. Right. But to get the surface, the feathers preserved is rare. And what Archaeopteryx is famous for is you can actually see very faint imprints of the feathers. And they found some they they have found some dinosaurs that look like they have imprints. People say, I mean, it's hard to see. Yeah. Uh, so it's but pain. right. But most dinosaurs, you're not seeing what's on the surface. Right. All right. Any other questions? Well, thank you. <laughs>